Hello, my name is Green and welcome back to another episode of Build School. I know it's been a long time since we did one, but I want to talk about something today that's not frequently talked about by building videos, and that's diagonal houses. So I've got a few examples prepared here today, and I've got an example that is a square build, so to speak. So we've got the diagonal build and we've got the square one. These two are identical, not to a T, but fairly close. You can see that they use the same palette, same shapes, etc, etc. And you can see quite clearly just from a glance that this one looks distinctly awkward and this one looks a bit more at home, despite it being diagonal. Now, what do we mean by a diagonal house? Well, that's quite easy to explain. Let me just grab a block to show you. So normally when we build, we build square, let's call it. I don't know if there's a, an actual term, but we'll call it square building. We normally place our blocks like that, so we've got straight right angles, corners, lots of flat faces. But when we build diagonally, we do something a little bit different with how we place the blocks. And if it wasn't obvious, we place it with the corners attached and not the flat faces. So we get a very different style of house in general from it. It's still square, technically speaking, but what we get is no flat faces at all. We get lots of little right angles. And with lots of these placed over and over again, it can look at home if it's done correctly. And what I want to do this video is kind of teach you some techniques and encourage you to make your own diagonal house to see how it looks and if it will fit. Because, as you can see, they can look really nice. And the other thing is, on the inside, they've actually got quite a lot of space to work with. It feels a bit more spacious despite the size of the house, so that's something to consider as well. Let's, first of all, take a quick look at the two of these. So you can see they use exactly the same palette, same shape, etc, etc. But this one looks distinctly awkward, and that's because this one was made first, and this one was designed to copy it. Now, there are differences, but using the same principles that we normally use in building, we can produce a build like this. But there are just very slight variations on building diagonally that you should take into account to get the best results. So normally, when we build, we make a framework here, as you can see, log, and then we place it one block back. So if we just steal these blocks, I can demonstrate. So normally when we build square, we have two pillars if we're going for a you know, very basic build. We've got two pillars, that's our framework, and then we have a wall set one block behind it. Simple stuff, and then we put a roof over the top. It's just, it's just stone for now, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, it's just an example. And if we build diagonally, it actually changes how we need to do this and set this back. So if I build a diagonal example, and we go connect, 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 connect. So these are all going in one straight line, just connecting up. And it's very easy to misplace them if you don't add these little uh, guiding ones in the middle. And if we add in just a set of blocks directly in the center, instead of putting it one block back, we get that, and that works. Except these aren't really framework blocks, because remember, these are one block forward. So indeed, we would have to place it here. Okay, now that seems that seems simple enough, right? Because then we can just ta change this to the, the wall block, right? Now, the problem comes in when we need to do another set of pillars. So if we go connect, 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 another set of pillars, then these are set directly in the middle, you see? And if we wanted to set these one block back, it would need to go here, you see? So it connects up. Do you see, it's difficult to visualize the problem because working in diagonals is quite tricky. But you see, if we've got it set one block back diagonally on these frames, it works one way, but then we get here and it, it doesn't work because if we were going to do it again, it would need to go here. Essentially, we're one block off and that's frustrating. So there's a little trick that we can do to make our framework work. So instead of doing, uh, you know, putting these blocks directly in the center, which is the equivalent of doing this on a, a square frame, which is not what we normally do, although, you know, sometimes you can. So what we can do here to fix this little issue, if we just remove all these that don't work in the center, there's a very simple trick that can make your house look a bit more segmented and fit together. So instead of placing it in here, we kind of compromise. We place it one here, 
on the flat face. So I know it's not exactly diagonal, but we will still be covering this area. And then we go one, two. So essentially we just connect it on the flat face and then in the middle. And then that should work for the same here. So it's almost like placing it just one block. It just offsets that one block problem that we had before. And then that should place there. And there we have a working framework. Now, obviously, if you've got really long walls, this is going to get slightly more complicated. But if you've got a section of wall that just frames up like this one, where it has a repeated pattern. So let's take a quick mosey over here. You can see that we've collected it up exactly as described. And then we've got two in the middle. So if we come over here and we just build up these walls all the way up, and we're just going to make a little mini example for uh, this diagonal house. There we have our framework. Now it does look a bit odd actually, but that's because there's you know nothing there. Obviously another problem with building diagonal is that you don't really have anywhere to put your doors. Now obviously placing doors is a bit tricky. We've got a huge space here, but if you just mark out where the doors are going to be, see so these would go, we need to cover this space. So if we right click here and we right click here, it has to be in these corners. Then we get a door that opens up in the middle and then we can do some detailing here to kind of cover up the door a bit later on. And that's some that's the similar thing that we did over there. Indeed, we added another bit of log here. And then we added a bit of uh, framework over the top. But that's just another issue that you need to overcome with working with diagonals. So it's quite easy then to add lots of details using slabs. They're your best friend when you're building in diagonals. You can indeed place your doors the other way around if you want. So you could have them uh, here and here, and they open outwards instead. That sometimes looks a bit more natural. And what I want to point out is that we've got sort of this jagged area. So instead of just building it straight up, it usually st you know starts off a little bit out, and then it goes up another layer and indeed you can't really notice it but there's several layers in there this bit for example is actually one block over the top so that's something definitely to consider when you're making it so let's continue with this example I did make this a little bit too small so some of the things that I'm going to make might look a bit weird so let's just fill in the windows you do have to use white glass uh, block instead of panes because uh, well we can use panes but it does actually you know, make life a bit trickier because of this little problem here. You actually end up creating a jail cell instead. So if we connect them up like so, then we kind of get an, an you know a weird looking problem where we've got these holes here. In, in in general, it's easier to use the glass block, but you can still use panes if you want to. And indeed, you can get a really nice effect with them. But on the whole, I'm going to use some uh, glass blocks. And it feels good to actually use these because normally glass panes are the block of choice. Right, so let's continue with our little house here. Now let's go on to the roof because the roof is something that I think everyone will dread when it comes to building diagonally. And we'll go and have a look at our quick examples first. So let's have a look what we've done over here. Now these are using uh, the same technique but have a different shape. Basically, we're placing blocks diagonally, surprise, surprise, and we've got a A-frame front. Now, this one's got a bit more of an accentuated one, and we're using full blocks just to fill in that space, and it's done almost organically. Now, this brings me on to what not to do, or perhaps you shouldn't do. People get upset if I say you shouldn't do it. In my opinion, this is a bad idea. So, it might be... Um, your instinct to do exactly what we do on square frames, which is place staircases over the top because we get a nice easy effect with minimal effort on our part. And then we can do a little overhang, etc., etc. You know how to do roofs and that looks fine. That's exactly what we do normally. But if we do that on a build like this, we start to get a bit of an issue because it doesn't look the same. With all of these little turns at every corner, it ends up looking a bit strange. And let me just finish this off so you can see. Okay, so I've completed the diagonal roof using 
staircases. And as you can see, it's these repeated patterns. You can clearly see this zigzag pattern over and over again. And that's something we don't see over here where we've used the full block. It looks a lot more natural using this technique here. And it just, it becomes so obvious that we're trying to make a diagonal house. And it's not like we're trying to actually hide the fact that we're making a diagonal house. It just looks clunky and awkward. Now, I'm not saying this looks terribly bad. In fact, I was a bit surprised to see that it, it actually works quite well. It doesn't look terrible, but it does look like a massively repeated pattern and not as natural sitting as those over there. So this is an option if you're making your diagonal house, especially if you're struggling. And you can just, you know, place lots of slabs over the top to get a little archway, but you do have to create a big overhang to make it meet in the middle naturally. But what I recommend you do if we remove all of this, the way I would do it, and indeed has been done over there and over there, is instead we place ourselves another set of frameworks and then fill in the gap. So the middle here is going to be up, so indeed if we take some log wood, we want to make sure it goes high enough that we make it work, and then we create a little overhang, again going diagonally, and we make sure that it meets exactly where we want it to. So if I work my way up here, maybe bring this down a bit, something along those lines. Now it is going to be a bit awkward when you get to this point, so you might want to do something like taking your uh, spruce staircase. Now remember, this house here is incredibly small, meaning that it is going to look a bit more awkward than some of the larger houses. The larger you go on any house, the less nitty gritty details you have to try and force into it. Now what you might need to do on a build like this is actually use both layers of diagon diagonal, diagonal layers. So it, it might be better to sort of do that. So you can see it kind of works and it might take a little bit of uh, fidgeting to try and get the perfect angle. And remember, it might not look perfect at this point, but you get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So you need to, you need to just practice a bit with it, fiddle around, try and work out where it's going to work the best. And there we have our framework. And indeed, I think I'm just going to put that on the top and we've got an a-frame and it's certainly better than what we just had with the diagonals which kind of just went over like that it was a bit more it was less natural so we've got our bit there now how we deal with the side is also important because if we just make it straight like this we're going to come into the same problem of the repeated pattern and it's not going to work we need to create some sort of organic shape now whether we want to bend it downwards like so i think that's what we're going to do for this build but you can also bend it upwards so to speak like that and that accentuates the window the other one accentuates the roof by going down this one accentuates the window so i think i'm actually going to stick with this i'll i'll take back what i just said and this is what we're going to use for our roof. Now, we then need to replicate what we did here, over here, because it is a symmetrical house. Okay, so I think I've replicated that. Now, it is extremely difficult to replicate diagonal compared to flat faces because it's very hard to work out exactly where each bit goes and you're working with slabs, which can always be a pain as well. So something to bear in mind that building diagonal is just a bit difficult compared to, quote, normal building, which is perhaps why people don't try so hard. But that's okay because, you know, this is what we're here for, is trying to learn how to, to make these sorts of houses. Right, so now that we've got the framework, we can make this bit in the middle, and perhaps we want to lower this one just by half a block to give it another bit of shape. So you can see we've got a lot more organic shape here, rather than this sort of straight cut or even the zigzag pattern, this is a lot more organic. Now, of course, we want to take something else to fill it in with. And if I just take some brown and some gray terracotta, I think that will do for, for this build. And we will come across some problems, such as uh, these little holes everywhere, because we are working with slabs and diagonals. So we're going to get lots of little holes. But we'll just come across, we'll fix those up a bit later on. So if I just fill this in best I can, right, so what I would do here is just replace that with a log. In fact, it might look better with just replacing that with a full bit of slab. 
and again, replace that with just a bit of slab. Now we might want to do something here because this is a bit awkward. If we, there we go, whatever, you, you can detail it as you like. Now what we want to do here is fill this in again. So we want to just take care of these little awkward areas of our build. And you know, there's, there's plenty of options to do that. Now, probably just the simplest way to deal with this is just to add another bit there. So we filled in all the little holes. Now it does look a bit awkward, so we might want to just fiddle around with some of these blocks and make sure that we make it look a bit better. Now, if you've got an awkward shape like this, sometimes the best way is to just embrace the fact that it's not perfect and add a couple slabs in there. And that kind of just says, yeah, this isn't perfect but I'm detailing it to make it look a bit more handmade. Now this one actually has come out a bit more rigid and perfect, so there's a couple of options there to do. You can see that that works. Now, like I said, this looks really weird because the house that I've made is just so small. If we jump over here, we've got a, a, an example of a smaller house, and this one looks a bit odd as well, just because of the size. When you've got a lot larger of a span, an area to cover, it will sit a lot more naturally. That's just one of the common occurrences. So another bit of advice when you're building diagonally is to go a bit bigger. Now this is a very tiny house and it actually works. If you if you sort of zoom out a bit, you can tell that this is, you know, your A you know, your A frame and you've got your roof there and the walls, etc. And if we go inside, it's actually quite spacious, got a lot of air, even though it is a tiny, tiny house. So that's kind of the principles of building diagonally. So let's go over them briefly again. Make sure that you put your blocks to the side here and then have, you know, a, a curved wall segment. Try to avoid just making zigzag patterns on the roof. Make sure you frame your A-frame and plenty of overhang. And detailing is more than just spamming slabs in a straight line. You want to make sure that you're using both lines and make sure it juts out a little bit. You don't need to make it all rigidly along this line. It will not come out good. Make it make use of both sides. All three of those layers will make up the wall, which means it will be a bit thicker than normal. But that's okay, that's just one of the consequences of uh, building diagonally. And as you can see, the results are good. You get a really nice looking build out of it. Now up here, you may be wondering what this is if you've seen it in the background. Building a diagonal tree house is difficult, but it works better than a square one because when we build a tree, we don't tend to do this with the branches. We tend to build diagonal branches to make it look more organic. Again, diagonal makes it look like it's more flowing. So if we place the house on those tree branches, it can look quite nice. So if we go and have a look up here, it seems like the tree house sits a bit more naturally. So this is a good example of how diagonal builds can work. So in conclusion, building diagonal is not easy. It is indeed quite tough. And detailing is very similar to how we normally would. So if I take some uh, dirt blocks and wooden trap doors and some, you know, so, some flowers here. I can make flower pots like I normally would, add some, you know, tiny little details. You can add a couple trap doors there. Another good detail is to use some buttons because they will work there as well. And there we go. We got some detail on the house. Very easy to add, very simple and the same as, you know, adding detail on something like this. We're just using the same techniques over and over again on this one. So they are similar. They are similar in how you do them, but there are just these tiny little tricks that you need to know when you're building diagonal because you may have tried it yourself and gone, this doesn't look right. And it's because everything kind of just twists around by one block. And that's something that you need to consider when you're making diagonal houses. So all there is left to say is a big, big thank you for watching this video. I hope that it helped. And thank you to Botbox who made that house and AJ who made that one. So that's it for diagonal houses. I'd love to see what you create. Remember, you've got to practice to make it work. And tweet me your designs on Twitter and I will take a look at them. I love to see what people make when using my design tricks and tips. Again, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.